Hey people, let's talk about a paint company that doesn't get a ton of attention on this channel, but really should. These are our top 10 neutrals by Glidden Paint. I'm James from thepaintpeople.com and welcome back to the channel. Our focus is to simplify the world of painting and decorating while also catering to some of the more professional painters and contractors and do-it-yourselfers watching as well. Whether you need help picking colors or some more detailed information on paint products, the entire team at The Paint People is here to help. So if that sounds like something you would find value in, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to make sure you don't miss out. Just go ahead and click it. Come on, click it. Using off-whites and neutral colors in general tends to be a great starting place for most interior designs, and it's largely due to them being flexible, allowing them to fit in a variety of different spaces. Neutrals tend to lean warm or cool. Your warmer neutrals will start with a gray base and then contain creams, beiges, or even reds and taupes added in, and on the cooler side, your grays would be tinted with blues and greens. Even though neutrals are versatile colors, it still means you need to make sure you pick the right ones for your space. We went ahead and gathered 10 colors on this list, and it's a healthy mix of cooler bluish grays, light warm taupes, and some whites as well. And as an added bonus, we'll also post the closest Benjamin Moore color on the screen for you, so you can follow along and have a close color alternative from that company as well. Starting with the brightest color on this list, we have white on white. This is a bright, almost icy white that is going to be the closest thing to a vibrant, pure white you can get, especially on this list. This would be a great choice as a trim and door color if you want a mega clean, stark look. I will say it's probably going to be far too bright to use as a wall color, both because of how overpowering it might be, as well as the potential coverage issues you might have when applying it. For something almost as bright, but has just a touch of warmth to soften it a little bit, would be the color Crisp Linen White. Although it has that added tint to give it a creamy quality, it's still bright and white enough to function as a trim and door color without feeling too warm and yellowy. It's more likely going to be a better choice when accompanying warmer earthy neutrals, like a lot of the ones we're going to talk about later on on this list, and I tend to like its cozy touch of cream. Third color we have here is a little more of an off-white because it has the same type of warmth found in the last color, but this one is just a bit darker. And it also introduces a little more gray to make it an appropriate off-white to use on walls. Parchment white is a great choice as a bright main wall color. That's because it is quite vibrant and lively in larger areas, but it's still different enough from a pure white trim where you'll notice some contrast between the two. Even if you were using it on the upper section of a wall and then you have like a pure white wainscoting right below it, the look will be subtle, but still apparent enough. You could still use this on trims and doors alone, but in that case, it'll start to look a tiny bit less white compared to the other two we talked about before. But on kitchen cabinets, I feel it sort of hits that sweet spot of soft and bright. Getting a little bit deeper now is Elegant Ivory Cream. And as we can tell from the name, this one is definitely more creamy. It has quite a bit more beige, just a touch of taupey gray, and enough colorant inside to firmly place it in the off-white category. Using this color on the ceiling, for example, will give you the look of a tinted ceiling rather than a white one. It's still a very light color, all things considered, and it will open up any space you use it in, but keep in mind there's enough tint in there to classify it as a full-on beige color. Speaking of beige, this next one has it in the name. White Cliff Beige is, interestingly enough, a bit less beige than the previous one. It has more depth to it, it's a bit darker, and I would say it's less creamy and a little more taupe leaning. While it contains beige, its warmth is softened by a little bit of gray and some red, which under certain lighting conditions can give it that slightly peachy feeling to it, but only slightly. And it's that gray that provides a reasonable amount of balance to it. A deeper version of this color is Stone Harbor Grage, which is quite a bit different from Benjamin Moore's color called Stone Harbor. So get that out of your head. This one is around your mid-tone category of colors, but it also has that blend of beige, gray, taupe, and red, which essentially leaves you with an earthy, warm gray. And it can sometimes have a little bit of a pinky quality and have a mauve undertone that can sometimes come through, but it's not enough to take away from this color's flexibility and versatility. It'll work with beiges, taupes, other grays, and even some of the cooler colors, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Before we transition into those cooler neutrals, let's round off the warm ones with Water Chestnut. 
This one is really a great combination of a deep beige with a sandy quality to it, but it's still a comforting and inviting color because of that warmth. It'll make you feel all warm and cozy. <laughs> and it seems to have a classic style about it too. That being said, more and more houses I've seen are starting to favor some of those cooler neutrals we're talking about. And before we jump right into blue, let's talk about a transitional green leaning neutral called White Sage. The green in here is pretty understated. That is especially apparent when you have it next to some of the gray beige colors from earlier on, then you really start to see that green come through. It's a muted gray green, not unlike the green you would find in green tea ice cream. Colors of this hue can sometimes have a tranquil spa-like feel, and I think this one is no exception. But if you want to be more transparent with your cooler neutrals, then you could opt for Silvery Moonlight, which is a true cool blue-gray. This one has an airy feeling to it because of the fact that it's not so much of an aquatic blue that can sometimes lean teal. In fact, it almost seems like there's a touch of purple hiding in the background to give it a slightly foggy, or more appropriately, silvery quality. It can have a tendency to reveal a little more of that purple hue rather than its blue, depending on the lighting, but personally, I really like the effect it gives. For something that's more straightforward with its blue, you have Quiet Rain, which is another one of those light mid-tone cool neutrals, only this time, we take another little step towards that aquatic, slightly greeny blue. Because it's fairly close to the previous color, your lighting will still have an impact, but this one will favor that slight green-blue undertone rather than purple. But like we talked about, these are neutrals we're dealing with, so the differences between each one and how they interact with your specific interior design will vary considerably. Question time. What was your favorite neutral out of the bunch? Let us know in the comment section below, and maybe we'll feature it in a future episode of Color Code. Speaking of which, here's an episode right over here. This happens to be one of my favorite neutrals of all time. You can click on this and learn all about it. If you haven't subscribed yet, then I guess I haven't done my job, but <laughs> that's okay because myself and all of us at The Paint People are having a blast making the color content you crave. See you on the next one.